So welcome back. This is uh, lesson three. Lesson one you did on your own before we were able to um, use the computer and put it online. And then the lesson two was about the five basic drawing skills. And we covered um, edges with your blind contour drawings of your shoe and your hand. And we covered spaces with your upside down drawings. <clears throat> now we're going to go into relationships and proportions and being able to perceive those. Okay, a little bit ago I explained about how we all have preconceived childhood images in our mind and what Donald Duck looks like is probably one of them. But if we turn him upside down, he's a little bit less recognizable. And that's what we want. We want you to be able to just see the lines and the spaces in the different shapes and not think about it as being different parts of, say, Donald Duck. So it's going to help you to learn to see, not just draw what you think you see. So you're going to start with the upper left hand corner and you're going to kind of measure how far is the beginning of this curved line from the edge of the paper and start drawing your curved line. And then you keep double checking. You don't want to make this curved line go way big like this so he has this shape is this big. You want to try to make it so it's a similar size shape, that this line here is about the same size and so forth. And you can erase if you make a mistake. If you feel like, oh, I drew that too long, or I drew that too big, um, you can erase it and, and fix it. But the main idea is to train your eye to see what's really there, not to draw what you think is there. So you're going to try to draw this line and then this next line and so forth. All the little details that you see. You can just do short lines. You don't have to do one continuous line. You can draw part of the line, pick up your pencil, and judge again the spacing. When you're perceiving relationships, for example, in this drawing that I did of Still Life of Cups, you can see that there's a handle here, a handle here, and a handle here. This curve takes your eye around, this curve takes your eye here, and then to here, and around and then around, and then down to here, and back up again. And so you're learning about the relationships between these curves, this space here compared to this space, this space compared to this space. Those are the kind of things that you need to start uh, learning about perceiving when you're learning about relationships and proportion. The height of this cup compared to this one, this one's a little bit taller even though it's behind it, and then this one's a little shorter. Now when you're having a, a physical cup in your hand and you're looking at it, when it's sitting on a table, you can see in the cup most likely. But when it's a little bit higher up, perhaps you can't see in it anymore and the top is just a straight line. But your mind is telling you it's a circle. So people have difficulty in drawing this when it's sitting on a table. Also, the bottom of the cup is round. You know that the bottom is round. But then when you draw it, as you notice here, this is, has a curve. This has a curve. There's a little bit of a curve showing there. Most people, when they first draw a cup on a table, they draw the bottom as a straight line because they know the table is flat but yet there's actually a curve there. Okay, when you draw a cup sitting on a table, I have it propped up on the book so you can see it better in the camera, you're going to learn how to do sighting. And sighting is a way to measure with your pencil. Your pencil has to be straight up and down, vertical. You use your thumb as you're measuring and the tip of your pencil. And so your arm has to be perfectly straight. If your arm is bent, you won't get a, an accurate measurement. And if your pencil is at an angle, you will not get an accurate measurement. And this is really crucial, especially in uh, drawing proportions of figures, people, and buildings and things like that. So we're just going to use it to draw the cup. And so to get an idea of how much of this you can see when the cup is sitting on the table you want to measure and so I'm going to take the top of my pencil I'm going to close one eye 
and I'm going to have the top of the pencil line up with the back edge of the cup. And then I'm going to slot, I'm holding the pencil like this, you can wrap your little finger around it like that, if that's easier. Pencil straight up and down, arm is straight, out. And the top of the pencil is at the top back of the cup, um, the ellipse of it. Then I'm going to slide my thumb down to the um, front of the cup. So what I'm seeing, the depth of this ellipse, is only that much in the measurement. So then what I want to do is take my pencil and mark there for the top and there will be the bottom. So then as my cup <clears throat> to draw it, instead of holding with the um, tripod grip or the writing grip and trying to draw like this, that's what most people do and they end up with a cup that looks like this. And you can see that the, the top of the uh, cup is uh, dis not formed properly. The cup is also a little bit of an angle that does, the sides are not even. Uh, but the most important thing is you want to get this form to be um, smooth in way, the way it's drawn around. So I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> Instead of using the tripod grip, you're going to use the overhand grip. And I'm going to try to draw this and not get in the way of the camera. But um, you're going to use your whole arm. And you're going to use your whole arm swinging around. So you go like this. And you try to make it so that you do it very lightly. And you try to get it so that the top of your your swinging around goes to your top measurement and the bottom goes to your bottom measurement and you go around and around and around several times not just once and then you go back and you pick the best lines and darken them and then you will erase the extra lines that you don't need <clears throat> So we don't. We also want to um, sight in the width of it. So you can turn the pencil sideways, and I'm going to measure the width is about like that. And you also want to make sure that both sides are the same from the center. So if I go like that and measure, and I go like that, then this part should come around here a little bit more. It's a little hard to draw this when I'm not standing right in front of the paper. But you get the idea, I think. You want to darken <clears throat> your um, your best lines and erase the ones that you don't want. And then when you're done, you're going to have nice curved edges. Many, when they first start drawing a cup, for example, they will go like this, and then they have pointed ends. You don't want to have pointed ends. You want to have nice, smooth, curved ends. Okay? So now I erased the uh, extra poorly uh, drawn ellipse um, so that I could show you how to draw the sides. So the sides of a cup need to be perfectly vertical. Um, parallel to the sides of your paper. Many students will draw their cup and it looks like it's leaning over. You want to make sure that the sides are perfectly straight. And then you can measure how tall the cup is also with your pencil straight up and down. One eye closed and do the same thing. And so the bottom of it's about right here. So the bottom is not going to be straight. What you want to do again is you're going to use your whole arm and you're going to loosely go around and around and around until you get the best curve and then go back in and pick the best lines to be able to draw your cup. <clears throat> so then the next part will be about um, learning about lights and shadows and so you will shade 
a cup to make it look three-dimensional. You also want to erase this back part of the uh, ellipse that you drew. Clean it all up a little bit. But when you shade it, it'll um, pretty much disappear anyway, just like this line will mostly disappear when it's shaded. Um, so when you look at my, my drawing of the cups, you can see that the light is coming from here, and there's light on this side of the cups, and <clears throat> there's shadows cast here, and then this light here is reflected light off of the other cups, and the table. But many people will have one side of their cup light here and then they have this part in here light. But because the light is coming from this direction you have this part of the cup in shadow. So those are things that are it's important to look at. If you see this cup right here um, the light is coming from more in front so you don't get that same um, cast shadow as you do that is in here. So I want you to see when an object as it uh, is sitting at different um, levels according to your eye level. So here, here's the eye level or the horizon line if you're outside with a landscape and as a cup is higher or lower, you'll see less, um, well let me go down this way, you'll see less and then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more to where if you keep going you'll eventually see if you're looking straight down into a cup. So as it goes up higher, you will see more of the bottom of the cup and less of the top. And so even in this, you can connect these anywhere you want and erase the parts in the middle and you can have a glass or a cup or if you curve around a little bit, you can even have a bowl. So then when you're drawing a handle, you want to look really carefully at where the handle attaches and the curve. Now the handle on this cup has somewhat of a straight edge right here and then it curves around and then the part that attaches you can see the top so you see the top here and then the bottom or on the inside of the handle, it curves around. Like that. So the lighting is not going to be um, maybe necessarily the kind of lighting that you would have, but I can see from where it's sitting now that there's a little bit of a cast shadow here. and there's light coming in here actually a real strong highlight right there this is just a real rough um, sketch of course so you can see it, it makes it look like it has three dimension because you have the part that's underneath and has it as it comes around. Instead of just drawing it like that, that doesn't make it look like it's a three-dimensional handle that you can actually grab onto. And so then the sides, here this, the light's coming from here, so I've got some shadow in here. And then the lighting here isn't really, really great for getting, um, the best shading, but if you get a, a little bit going here you can kind of get the feeling of that it's three-dimensional. So what I want you to do is for homework or practice is you're going to be drawing a sphere and shading it. 
And here you can see that this light's coming from here and there's gradated shading. It's, you don't see a definite line, but it's blended evenly. And then notice, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but um, right here there's a highlight. I mean, this is a highlight. I'm sorry, excuse me. A reflected light off of surfaces around it. So that's very important to have the reflected light. So I'm going to, um, instead of trying to draw a circle that's perfect, find something at home, a bowl, a plate, and trace around it. Because then you'll be more satisfied with your results. So I'm going to pretend that the light is coming from here. And I'm going to shade. You can shade like this. And then cross back over the lines. It's called cross hatching. And then when you're done doing a lot of that, you can blend it in with your finger or with a tissue. A tissue is better because your fingers have oil in them. And... You can end up having spots on your drawing later. So I'm just going to do this real, real quickly here. Now notice I'm trying not to shade real close to here because I want to leave an area that's real skinny over here for the uh, reflected light off of the surface around it. The reflected light comes from the table that the sphere is on. Uh, other objects, maybe it's sitting on a cloth. So this could take maybe half an hour to do a really good job. My hand is getting all black, so I'm starting to smear it. But um, then you can go like this or use a tissue to blend it. And then when you're all done, this area is going to be lighter. And this area here is going to be the darkest. The darkest dark is just a little bit before the reflected light. And because this is on um, paper that's taped together, I'm getting extra little marks from the tape and the folds and the paper underneath. But if you work on a smooth surface, you're going to get better results. See, I have edges here from the paper underneath. So you get the idea, I think, that you can see that it's starting to look three-dimensional. You can also cast a shadow, if you want, over here from the sphere. And shadows are darkest close to the object, and they get lighter as they get further away. So this is a homework assignment I want you to do. Um, use cross hatching, which is lines that are going one direction and then another direction kind of close together. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect. Um, if you still see the strokes when you're all done, that's okay. So then after you finish drawing the sphere and shading it, then go ahead and take your cup drawing and shade it. Look really, really carefully at all of the lines and the shapes and the shadow areas. Um, every mark that you put on the paper comes from your observation of the subject that you're drawing. And here's an example of a very um, strong light on a cup. You can see the light is coming from here making light on the far side of the inside of the cup. You can still see the rim. It's catching the light. And then the shadows on the inside here and the shadows on the other side there. And notice the reflected light right there. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So this is something that you should do is um, draw the sphere, shade it, and then set up a cup with a strong light and draw it and shade it as well using crosshatch and you can use a tissue to blend it in also if you would like to have a smoother shading. So those are the two assignments that I'd like you to do after this lesson. Thanks for viewing lesson number three and beginning drawing and I hope that you felt like you made some progress and learning 
um, actually how to draw something in, in reality, a drawing a cup, instead of just drawing something that's upside down. You can also draw, um, take a photograph of a cup and draw it upside down if that gives you a better feeling for getting the form of the cup. But um, try to do these two exercises and if you have any questions you're welcome to call me at the library and I'll um, do my best to help you with figuring out how to do it. So thank you very much.